Hello there, welcome back to my channel. I am Melissa Ashley. I am a 40 something plus size disabled lady who likes to share all my adventures, gigs, days out, holidays I go on and all my little tips and tricks along the way that might help you. So welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe down below and hit the like button too and hit the bell for the notifications for other videos. Other YouTubers say this and I think I'm supposed to, so I do. I feel awkward. So, <laughs> back to what today's video is all about. This video today is all about how to save for things that you really want. I go on, sorry I'm flicking pens, nervous, <laughs> I go on lots of adventures, I travel, I go on days out, go to see gigs, go to the theatre, but this one today is more about being able to save the money that you have coming in and where you spend your money and being able to calculate realistically what you can save and what you need to achieve for the things that you want. As part of today's video, I did write a little list in my book here and just some sort of notes and things that I thought hit the key points of what I do to be able to save the money to go on all of my adventures. So these are the, was the list that I wrote, which was be realistic, plan your goals, know your weaknesses, keep up to date records, don't deviate from your budget, don't overstretch yourself and avoid temptation, think long term. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through one of each one of those at a time and explain what I mean and give you some sort of tips and hints of things that I do so I can save for all the things that I do. First thing is be realistic. You really need to know what money you have coming in, what money you have going out and how much you can save and also be more in control of your spending as well. What I did is I created a spreadsheet which I will cut to after I've just explained this and it was where I sat down and really analysed all the money that I do have coming in income wise and then I sat down and was like well everything that goes out and when I say everything I mean everything every bill whether it be your mortgage your rent if you're still living at home and you're wanting to save to move out of home do you pay your parents any money as well all your bills, your gas, your electricity, your water, your telephone, your TV license, TV subscriptions, internet subscriptions and all those other things that you pay out regularly and you don't think that they're an expenditure such as maybe subscriptions to clubs like weight loss clubs and things it's the new year I know a lot of people are doing that and also things like birthdays anniversaries and when it gets close to Christmas, Christmas presents, all those things that throughout the year cost you money, you need to include on this budget. Now the idea of the spreadsheet is you sit, you write down all your expenditures and then you start thinking about how important is these expenditures. Are you spending out money on a gym subscription that you don't use? If so, cancel it. That's money go, that could be going towards a holiday of a lifetime. And although you might think, ah, oh, it's only 20 quid a month, that adds up. It all helps. So really analyse your spending. Do you go every day and pop to a cafe or a supermarket and buy a pre-packed lunch and sit and eat a sandwich from Sainsbury's? Or do you buy a loaf of bread and some food to go in it each week and pack your lunches for work which will save you so much money in the long run okay it's a little bit of effort but a tiny little bit of effort each evening to make your packed lunch versus your holiday of a lifetime i know which one i want to be doing so you, this, this is the opportunity to really think about and drill down these expenditures that i have to put on this spreadsheet 
do I have to pay them? If it's your rent, council tax, water, electricity, gas, of course you have to pay them. But these little things that you keep spending out on, like, oh, you went to Primark four times in one month and ended up spending 200 quid, and you're like, how did I do that? I bought 20 million beauty blenders. That's how. So this is where you really need to drill down. Now on the spreadsheet, it has a space for actual expenditures, the things you have to pay. It has a space for you to put all your income in. And then it has a space, because being realistic, after you've paid all the bills that you have to, you do want to have some pocket money on you. So then I call this fun money. This is the place where you budget yourself a small amount each week to be spending on those things like meals out with friends, going to the cinema. And then your final amount at the end is what you have as a true cost left to save. So what I want you to do is sit down with this spreadsheet. I know you're like, oh man, man, that's long. Do you want a holiday? Do you? Do you? Then do it. This is how I do it. And I'm mad. I'm going to Thailand and I have the money sitting in my bank account already and I've already started saving for my holiday next year to Florida. So if I can do it and I work part time, you can do it. I created this spreadsheet as a way of keeping track of your regular income and outgoings. It's also a way that when you initially sit down and complete this, gives you a realistic target of how much you can save each month. I will be linking this spreadsheet down below in the description area for anyone to use. It is a Google spreadsheet, so if you have access to Google on your computer or on your phone, you can download this and you will always have this available to you on your Google Drive and you just keep updating it. It's a spreadsheet that allows you month by month to type in how much your expenditure is, how much income you're receiving, and then what money is left at the end of the month. Now, if I start at the top of this spreadsheet, it first goes into listing home expenditures. It has a column for to pop in things in, such as your rent and mortgage, a amount column, date out, and an account reference number. So basically, if you paid rent or had a mortgage, you'd put your mortgage lender's name in there or your landlord's name in. The next column, you would put the amount that you spend. The next one, the date out, which allows you to keep track on your accounts and what money's coming in and out on what dates. And finally, the account or reference number for that particular product. This is really handy because if you are on the go and you need to contact one of your suppliers for some reason, you have this information to hand. You just need to get onto Google. So what you need to do to start off with is complete this spreadsheet as much as you can. Now, as you can see, I've got like home insurance one, home insurance two, home insurance three. This isn't a one size fits all spreadsheet as it is right now. However, you can over type these to suit yourself. Now, you may only have one home insurance, but you might have a second kind of Corgi insurance. You could over type Corgi, for instance. You'd put the amount there and the date and the reference number. And you just keep on completing this sheet like this. So it has all your usual home household costs. Next one is to do with transport. Then personal finances. Now, when I talk about personal finances, I have got pension one and pension two in this column. When you complete this spreadsheet, you will put in how much you receive in wages a month from your employer as a net figure. The figure after the tax and national insurance has been paid and any workplace pensions has been taken or anything like that. That's the figure you'll use. So these pension one and two columns are for any possible additional, additional personal pensions that you may have. Then we have entertainment and other. So like gym and club subscriptions, birthdays, anniversaries and Christmas. Because 
these are realistic expenditures you know we have friends and family that we buy birthday presents and anniversary gifts and christmas gifts for throughout the year and we don't think to say actually let me put budget that let me put some money aside for that cost because then what is left at the end of the month is a more true figure then i've got other cost one other cost two other cost three these are entirely up to you what you put in there if you want to give yourself a clothes allowance a month to say all oh, right i'm going to allow myself x number to go out and buy new clothes every month Hopefully you don't do that and buy new clothes every month, you know, fast fashion, not being good and all that kind of stuff. But it's just the options there on this spreadsheet. This at the end will then give you a grand total of all your expenditure. Now I'm going to go right back to the top again now. And move across. And as you can see, it's colour coded. So everything that's kind of an expenditure over here. I'm pointing my mouse that is money going out so I've colored it red over here is income so your money coming in now people don't necessarily just have one income coming into their account each month for various reasons they might have a wage they may have some sort of benefit they may even with their partner transfer money to each other if one person's responsible for paying the bills those kind of things so that's why I've put five income columns here so you can actually be specific and over type and you could put wages in column one um, benefit in two three your partner's name if they're transferring money and those kind of things so that's the things you'd put in there and put the money out now we're all human after all the money has been accounted for in the important expenditure and you have your money in it's only human to need a little bit of pocket money for yourself now i call this fun money so this is why down below here it says money's remaining so in this column here what it will do is it will total up your income deduct all the expenditure from the red column and it will tell you how much you have left of your wages. What I generally do is I look to see how many weeks in the month there are until the next payday and I generally set an amount each week that I have to do with what I want. Once you've taken that into account, you put those totals in for each week, your final total will give you the amount you have left of your salary left to save now some months you might not have any money left in there because certain bills you may pay annually that's why there's nothing left in this column however if you are realistic about your earnings and how much you spend and really filling in this sheet will really drill down where you are spending your money go through your bank statements for the last three months as you're filling this in to make sure that everything you do, you do spend out on is here and the amounts are correct that's the thing that i did and then each month whatever is left to save that goes into your savings account as i say i will leave this spreadsheet linked in the description block below once you have got that all written down this is the chance for you to be realistic how much does it say you have left to save each month? Is that trip of a lifetime going to happen this year, next year or in five years? This is what I mean about being realistic. Plan your goals. Planning your goals uh, to me means what do I want in the short term? What do I want in the medium term? And what do I want in the long term? So goals for me might be that I have an amount of money that I can save for expenses that crop up. For instance, if my car didn't pass its MOT, needs new tyres, whatever, those kind of things. I have the money just sitting there. Then your medium term goals are possibly like weekends away um weddings if you're go if you know someone's getting married 
things like that could be expensive if you take into account that you may possibly have to travel to the event stay overnight which is hotel costs as well then buy a gift and of course you're going to buy a new outfit as well that can actually tally up quite heftily so that's the kind of like medium term goals that I kind of set myself that I'm like oh I have that money to kind of do those things and then my long term goals are like right in 2021 I want to go to Florida I want to go there just after the 50th anniversary of the Magic Kingdom so that is my long term goal my long term goal is only just under two years but it's whatever you set yourself but just plan what you want to do because then that's my air freshener I'm really sorry <laughs> then you know whether you will have the money or not to do those things at the end of the day all these things is up to you know your weaknesses this is a, a bit of a funny one because when I sat down originally over a year ago and started using this method, I didn't realise just how much I was spending outside of what I would budgeted for in my mind of what my actual spend was compared to what I thought thought I was spending they were two very different things I would go out buy the shopping each week get a delivery from the supermarket each week to arrive at the home but then when there wasn't necessarily something that we fancied eating that night or I hadn't prepared my lunch for work I would pop to the supermarket and when you pop to the supermarket it's a very it's very tempting to go in there they design it like this they to tempt you in you go in and then you see something and you see and you're like oh oh i'll just get that while i'm at it that'll come in handy oh i'll get that and you never really needed it in the first place and then suddenly you've spent all this money that you never even register in your mind when you go to costa and you literally you get your payment card and you go beep don't even look at the amount and you could be spending a fiver a day on a coffee and that's where knowing your weaknesses is really important you need to be able to be like I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna go into the supermarket and get all that stuff it's not important or be disciplined enough to go I'm going to the supermarket and I know exactly where it is I'm going to that aisle to pick that up and come away and that's it that was the thing I was spending money right left and centre out of my own personal money when it was like Scott and I split the food bill but the money we put aside in a, a food account which I'll go into in a minute I wasn't using for those odd trips to Sainsbury's or Tesco's or Asda I was using my own bank card and I was spending so much more money than I actually needed to and then I was skint I couldn't understand where was my money going until I looked at my bank statements so it does come down to a bit of discipline keep up to date records this is keeping that spreadsheet sorry that spreadsheet down below up to date every year your car insurance costs might change every year your rent might change your council tax your salary might change absolutely any time that there is a change in your income or expenditure update the sheet don't deviate from your budget now this is when i said i'd come back to you about a savings account uh, a food account i found the best way to manage my money was to split it this is gonna sound a bit bonkers so first of all 
Scott and I have a food account and the food account we we use the company called Pocket I bring that up there so basically Pocket is a prepayment card that you load money onto so when Scott and I get paid at the end of each month we have set aside we've decided an amount each that we think is a right amount to be spending on food and we load this card up then any time that one of us goes to the supermarket we each have a card this one's in my name the other one's in his each time one of us goes to the supermarket or does an online food shop we use this card this is our food account card so this is what i meant about i was going out and I wasn't taking this with me, so I was just whacking it on my normal bank card. So this is the food account card, and every time that we spend any money on food or cleaning products, things like that, this is the card that we use. Then, aside from that, I spoke about fun money, you know, the little bit of money that you have for yourself to go out to the cinema with your friends or for dinner so I then opened another prepayment card called Optimum Optimum again like pocket this is a prepayment card that I load with money now I tend to load this weekly I give myself a budget of what I'm allowed each week and I transfer it across now the reason I do it weekly rather than monthly is if I give myself an allowance of 50 pounds a week and that particular week I don't go anywhere I don't spend it so when I look, come to look at it the second week of the month and I haven't spent that 50 pounds I don't transfer another 50 pounds over I'm like oh so there's my 50 pound for week two and what that means is that £50 that's sitting in my main account will then siphon off into my savings. And I've, I've saved myself £50 just because I fancied a week in, <laughs> I was hibernating. I've saved another 50 quid. So just because you've allocated it to yourself doesn't mean you have to spend it. That's why I do this weekly. I put the money across, I check the balance, and at the end of the week, if I'm giving myself £50, if I've spent £30, I'll top it up by £30. If, if I've spent £50, I'll top it up the whole amount. But I'll only top it up to the amount I've budgeted for, for myself each week. So then whatever's left over at the end of the month, then will be transferred as savings into my account. Another good way to save money is loyalty cards now <laughs> i have got a load of loyalty cards here let me just this is just some of my loyalty cards that i have just just some you know just some some of these will be familiar if you live in the UK. If you're overseas, they may not be so familiar. So my first card, for instance, is a Tesco Club card. We tend to do online food shopping at Tesco. With a Tesco Club card, you get points which can go towards days out, day trips and things like that. However, Tesco work in partnership with Virgin Atlantic and you can use your Tesco club card points to go towards Virgin flying reward points so that's what I do so each time I spend any money on food or petrol in Tesco's I get this scanned and then at the end of I think it's every quarter you know I think it's every three months they tally up how many points I've saved and then that gets transferred over into Virgin Flying Points. And I'm saving my flying points. I'm hoping to go to Florida in October 2021. And that could either help with maybe an upgrade or a cheaper flight or a discount. So I know before when I did this, I 
hadn't gained as many points as I've got now and I think I got £200 off our holiday booking with Virgin Holidays because the points added up £200 of her savings and that's without me spending a penny it's just what I would be spending usually it's giving me credit Costa we've talked about having your coffee if you get a card like the Costa card you get this scanned every time you have a coffee it then will add up and eventually you'll get another free coffee so it will save you one free coffee but that one free coffee is still better than you paying out a fiver for it so if you do have your vice for costa make sure you have a loyalty card starbucks must have the same but i like costa another loyalty card scheme boots every time you buy anything with boots they will scan your advantage card and you get points they are points to spend in boots. I went into boots at Christmas time and with the points that I had on my card, I purchased three Christmas presents for nothing, just for using points. I spent my points. Ikea, Ikea family card. These are free. The minute you walk into Ikea, there's these little machines on the wall that you can pay, print out paper ones and then they'll send you a plastic one. They will have products that will have a family price. They will be cheaper than a normal price. But then there are times, at, such as your birthday, that you'll go into Ikea, you'll put this into the wall and they'll give you a £5 off voucher just because it's your birthday. Or it might be a free hot dog or a free ice cream or a free drink or something. But it gives you something for nothing can't knock that subway subway sandwiches exactly the same thing if you're going to buy things in there it accrues points and eventually you can get free food and finally nectar nectar reward points are taken we use these as sainsbury's to be quite honest with you these are the points that we earn in sainsbury's that eventually add up and you can make purchases in a multitude of stores and your points mean you can spend these on other things so reward cards look out for them they're great restaurants do them i know um i've got one with the beef eater reward points and when it's my birthday they send me a voucher to say if you go and eat there over your birthday and there's two of you one of you can have your main meal for free <laughs> there's all sorts of reward things out there i've got an app for harvester restaurants as well and they do like early bird deals or money off vouchers anything a lot of clothes stores as well are online if you register with them it's your birthday they send you money off vouchers these are all things that you'll be spending money out on you can save money next one on my list don't overstretch yourself don't overstretch yourself means don't do not not leave money for yourself to have throughout the month and don't overcommit to things that you can't afford if someone says to you hey let's go on holiday in five months for two weeks all inclusive to ibiza and it's 1500 pounds don't say yes if you know that you can't pay that in the next realistically two to three months because those sorts of holidays have to be paid in full generally a fair few weeks before you go so don't commit to things that you can't afford it's okay to say no or it's okay to say do you know what I'd really love to do that but can we make it a little bit later I need to save the money there's no shame in saying that at all. Don't get into debt. <laughs> Don't whack things on credit cards. Credit card debt just sucks. And you'll feel so much more better for when you go on your holiday or your big trip or the big thing that you've saved for to go do you know what i worked hard and i saved for that and i don't i've got it i've done it and i don't have to worry about it anymore make sure that you 
have money for yourself left at the end of the month. <laughs> I know that sounds a weird thing, but for instance, right now we're in the middle of January. It's the 17th of January today. I got paid the, I want to say the 20th of December, possibly. And it's, it's like a long old month between paydays. I don't get paid till the end of next week. But I have money in my account where I'm going out and having a meal with friends on Monday. Because I didn't just blow my budget. I didn't overspend. I didn't deviate. <laughs> I stuck to it. I had a plan. I knew what I needed money for. And I didn't overstretch myself. Avoid temptation and think long term. Wow. <laughs> this, this kind of is one of the hardest things you'll have to do. If you're serious about wanting to save money, this is the hardest thing you'll have to do. These are the times when you will get asked to do things and you haven't budgeted for them they were never kind of on your radar. You haven't set any money aside for them. And really, you shouldn't do it. These are the things you haven't budgeted for. These are the things that blindside you. You suddenly get asked to go somewhere or something important crops up and it means spending money. Or it might even be is spending out £20 in Primark to buy the latest Disney pyjama set and slippers. <laughs> See where I spend my money. <laughs> is it worth spending it on that or do I want to spend it on a holiday to Walt Disney World in Florida? What's more important to me? You. This is where temptation temptation is a temptress <laughs> and you have to be strong you have to think long term you always have to have your eye on the prize it's <laughs> I know that I went to Florida in 2018 with my mum and leading up to it I was trying to save money and I was trying to lose weight at the time as well we all know that that failed but <laughs> every time it was like there was a opportunity to spend money that I hadn't accounted for like that trip to Primark or a cake or an ice cream each one I was like I'd rather spend that money on an ice cream in Florida I'd rather spend that money on a top in Disney World and that's what I had to do I had to really kind of reset my mind to just focus on that one thing I had my play money still so I never went without, but you do have to make sacrifices to be able to save. Oh my days, <laughs> I have so waffled on. Bless you if you have made it to the end of this video. But I really hope that maybe some of it would be helpful to you to help you plan to save money for anything that you want to have fun doing. And not get into debt, not overstretch yourself and for it to be a really tangible thing for you. I've left the spreadsheet in the box below, the link. I'm really hoping this works. It's a Google spreadsheet so if you have any kind of Google account you can open it. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, I am Melissa Ashley. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like please subscribe um, and I will see you for the next video really soon. Lots of love as always. <laughs>